so today it's Q&A time. Today is gonna be a big one. We've got some moving announcements, leaving Seattle, future plans, lots of stuff. Oh, I'm just smelling, getting whiffs of this. It smells so good. Not gonna lie, it literally just took me about an hour and a half to set up this friggin' camera and lighting today. Test, test, test. 45 pumpkins behind me later. Here we are, we're in the kitchen. So we've got an exciting one today. If you enjoy this video while you're watching, you can give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, I'm gonna be doing lots of moving vlogs coming up very soon. I'm gonna leave my last moving vlog playlist down below. Okay, let's start. Wow, what a comfy position I give myself. I'm literally just digging into the corner of this island. <laughs> It's all good. Before we get into everything, I wanted to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is BetterHelp. Therapy has just been such a great thing that's come into my life in the last year. It's just so nice to be able to talk to someone, to not have to dump everything on friends and family and just get a different perspective from someone who is actually a licensed professional. So BetterHelp connects you with a therapist within 48 hours. It's done securely online. If you've tried looking for therapists, you know that that's really hard to do to find someone that quickly. So they'll assess your needs and then match you with your own licensed professional. It's so nice that they connect you with someone that quickly because they have over 20,000 professionals in their network. It's in other states, other countries. So no matter where you are, you should be able to connect with someone. And I'm definitely gonna be needing to find a new therapist when I move because you have to find someone that's licensed in your state. So that is something that I'm like, I'm glad BetterHelp's there because I don't have to spend weeks finding someone. I can just connect with someone within 48 hours. It's more affordable than traditional office counseling and financial aid is available. And you don't have to, you know, feel uncomfortable about going into an actual office or waste time driving there. You're just doing it in your own home. And schedule weekly online video and phone sessions with your therapist. And if you're not jiving with them, you can switch. You're not tied down to just one therapist. And it is really important to find someone that you feel comfortable with and that you want to, you know, pour your life and heart out to because you're going to be doing that. Therapy is not a taboo subject anymore. Even if no one that you know does it, take it from me. The amount of stuff that you learn about yourself and just techniques and concepts and ways to cope, it is priceless. And I wish I started therapy sooner. So if you want to check out BetterHelp, you can go to betterhelp.com slash win, W-Y-N-N, and get 10% off your first month. So I'll have them linked down below in the description box. All right, so obviously number one topic we're gonna to be talking about today, moving. So just to give a little background if you're new here or you gotta get caught up in things, definitely check out my last moving announcement video, which was literally a year ago. Check that out down below because it explains a lot why I went from my last place that I had bought to this place that I am renting. I moved to Seattle when I graduated college in 2014. I got my first jobs here out of college. I honestly never thought I would be here this long. I never thought I would be in one city this long. I really like moving. I like doing new things, seeing new places. So if you follow me on Instagram, you may think you know where I'm moving but I've got some curveballs for you. So my lease in this current apartment is up the third week of October. So I've been in here for a year. When I moved into this place, I knew I wasn't gonna stay longer than a year, but basically I just wanted to really enjoy my last year in Seattle. I have a whole apartment tour up of this place and moving vlogs and everything if you haven't seen those. I really just wanted to be more comfortable, have more space, and be closer to my doctors. So I'm super grateful that I was able to do that move and I'm so glad I did it. This last year here has been great. It was everything that I was hoping it would be, not just like the space. It's made my life so much easier. I've had to drive so much less. I freaking love this apartment. I wish I could just like transport this entire apartment to wherever I wanna go next, but unfortunately, you know, no one's invented a way to do that yet. So I know some people are like, you're already moving, what the heck? But in my mind, I knew this was happening and this was not gonna be somewhere that I stayed longer than a year. But I do really feel like my time is just up in Seattle. I love Seattle, I love Washington, I love the Pacific Northwest in general, everything about it. If you have been debating moving to Seattle or Portland or in this region, it's so beautiful. I could rave about Seattle for an hour. I will spare you because if you've seen my what to do in Seattle travel guide video right here, I talk all about it. If you're traveling to Seattle, there you go. I also have a video if you're moving to Seattle about all the neighborhoods and everything. It's been on my mind for a few years now that I'm like ready to leave Seattle and just have something new. Then COVID hit and I had three surgeries in 2020. So moving kind of just kept getting postponed. I do feel like for everything that's happened in the last few years, this was the right place for me to be. Like, I think it ended up working out the way it was supposed to, but in my gut, now I just feel like this is the right time. 
everything is kind of at a standstill just with health stuff, with other stuff. And it just feels like it's go time, baby, you know? So my lease here is up the third week of October and where I'm moving, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm actually gonna be going to three different cities over the next three to four months. In one of them, I'm gonna be staying like a month and a half. The other one's pretty much a month. And then I don't wanna give like an exact time in case things change because who knows what the heck is gonna happen over the next you know, few months. But around March, April, my plan right now is to move to New York City. Things could change. I could travel to another city and absolutely fall in love with it and decide I wanna move there. So I'm just kind of seeing what happens and seeing where I fold, fold what? <laughs> where I feel pulled to, but I have a big and a good feeling that it'll probably be New York City. So what I'm doing is immediately when my lease is up here, I'm gonna be visiting some family in the South, in the Carolinas. And then from there, from the beginning of November to the middle of December, I'm gonna be doing like a New York test run basically. I'm, I'm gonna live in Manhattan for about a month and a half, just rent like a short term place. See how it feels actually living there and not just traveling there. Nailing down the neighborhoods that I would wanna be in or the boroughs that I would wanna be in. I usually just move, <laughs> like in the past I've just made very impromptu decisions and just moved, but New York is its own beast, you know? I did just travel there. I have a really good feeling about New York. I love the energy. I love a lot of things about it, but it is different when you're somewhere like that for longer. As of right now when I'm filming this, I haven't booked my New York place yet. I've been looking around. It's been actually really hard to find somewhere that's like in an area that I want and that also has good lighting like for filming because I am still gonna be working. We'll get more into the YouTube side of this in a minute, but obviously I'm still gonna be working. I'm not just like taking five months off of work here. So after New York, I need to come back to Seattle for a few days for a doctor's appointment. I need to get injections. I'll be here for a few days and just have like back-to-back -back appointments. Spending the holidays with my family. Then the next city I'll be going to for, actually I'll be there for New Year's. January to February will be Boston. Yes, I will be there full-blown winter, I'm aware. You know, I'll get a big down jacket, I'll survive. When I move to New York, it's gonna be the same thing, so might as well have a little, little test run in the snow. Anytime I bring up Boston or Chicago, all people talk about are the winters. I was debating between Boston or Chicago because Chicago is somewhere that I did debate on actually like moving to, but I don't know. I don't have the best feeling about Chicago. Like I have really good feelings about all the places I'm going, but Chicago for some reason, maybe at another point, I don't know. But the city I'm going after Boston is Austin, Texas. Austin I keep hearing really good things about. I never thought, truly never thought I would be living in Texas at any point in my life, but it's a month and I've heard really good things about Austin. It's kind of like the more, you know, Portland-y, Seattle-y city in Texas. And it's supposed to be super cool. So if you have any recommendations for any of these cities, by the way, definitely leave them down below or DM me on Instagram. I would really appreciate it. Just like anything, food spots, places to check out, things to know, any of your tips. And then after Austin, like I said, to be determined, but most likely New York City. So there's just like a lot of moving pieces right now. A cross country move, it turns out is no joke. You have a few options. You can sell everything. You can try and ship as few boxes as possible, or you can make a cross country road trip yourself, or you can hire someone to drive everything across for you. Basically where I'm at right now is I am selling as much as possible. It is really expensive to get a mover across country, but not only that, I've just heard like horror stories about it, like people's stuff showing up either missing or just like five months later. So I think what makes the most sense is selling like all the furniture, all the main stuff, and then anything that I do need to have there, I'm gonna be shipping. So all my makeup for filming, like filming equipment, any other stuff, just records, like all that kind of, not like, <laughs> you know, like paper records. I'm gonna be selling my car. It'll be the first time that I won't have a car. And I think that was actually a question if I would do only public transport in a city. And yeah, New York City, you definitely don't need a car. If I wanna go on like weekend trips or anything and explore other parts of New York and just the states around there, which I'm sure I will, you can always rent a car, go on Turo, borrow a friend's car or something like that. So I am gonna be selling my Jeep. I'm gonna miss him, gonna miss that guy. But I mean, now's a good time to sell a car, right? I'm just gonna try and like hold on to my car as long as I possibly can in October because I'm gonna need it to 
you know, be moving stuff and driving around and also moving states. If you own your own business, you have to fully transfer over your LLC and everything to that new state. There's a lot of stuff with health insurance. I'm also like moving at a weird time when health insurance changes. So there's just a lot of shit like that that's going on in my mind right now. You know, it's a lot but it's gonna be worth it and I'm ready. So my first moving packing vlog is actually going up next week. So you guys will be seeing that super soon. I've been already starting to sell stuff. It's looking emptier in here. Not that you can tell by my background right now, but I've already sold like all my patio furniture. There are a few questions about feelings on finding new doctors when you move. Someone said, when considering moving, how much research do you do for doc slash medical support in an area? So I think it would be different if I was moving somewhere more rural. <laughs> that word is always so hard to say, rural. Obviously, you know, a huge city has options and has doctors, but I'm actually kind of excited to find new doctors, honestly, because I feel like I'm just at a standstill with my doctors here. Yes, it's a friggin' pain when you have to like start from scratch with 10 different doctors and do all the research. So it feels like the right time for that too, just to get a fresh set of eyes on everything and see if anyone has any ideas or figures anything out. But also I'm just gonna kind of see where I'm at. It could also be a good time to just go to Mayo Clinic and do that, which I had talked about a couple years ago and then you know doctors here found stuff and I did all these surgeries and whatever. How had your surgery recovery been going? Some people are asking about the injections and if they worked. So I'm about 10 months post-op right now and things haven't quite been going the way that certain doctors thought they should. I ended up getting another MRI recently. I'm not gonna go through what they found on that because I haven't met with my doctor about it yet. I've only seen the report. There were things happening on the report, but I'll let you guys know in another video what I hear more about that, but there are still things going on with my spine. The good news is that if you saw recent shadow inch moves, I talked about getting Botox and trying that and how in the past it's majorly flared me up and had a really bad reaction to it. I've tried it multiple times. This time though, they tried it more in here instead of going directly into my head to try and loosen up some of these muscles because these are all connected. But the good news is that the last round of Botox they did did not flare me up and it actually felt about 30% better in those areas. You can only get Botox every three months. And I had about a month and a half where there were some days where yes, I was still in pain and had a headache, but it wasn't a full blown migraine and I could like stay out the whole day, which obviously I would love to just like have that every day or most days, but, but to even have a handful of those days where you can just like function like a human was just truly incredible and I'm, so grateful I had a few of those days. I'm not gonna cry. So basically what we're taking from that is obviously that area was good, but now we're gonna try going in directly into my neck, which again, could go either way, could flare it up or could help based on what the Botox did down here. I'm hoping that it helps even more. So basically I'm just crossing my fingers that this next injection helps even more. Right now where I'm at when I'm filming this is it's fully worn off that Botox injection. And now that it has fully worn off, it's like definitely giving me perspective that the Botox for sure helped because I'm back to where I was before where I'm just in a lot of pain right now and getting migraines pretty much every day again. I had like a three day period this week where it was nonstop, like full blown throwing up horrible one. So it's good perspective that I definitely know the Botox did something. So now I just like can't wait until I get my next round. September, I think 22nd is when I can get my next round. And then it takes like a few weeks after that to actually start kicking in. So I have a couple months to go through right now where I'm back to where I was before. But if you deal with chronic pain, you know that you'll do pretty much anything and wait as long as you have to, to just even have like a few days of good. So Botox isn't like the long-term answer. You can't do it for forever, but it's a nice way to just like get a little bit more functioning time in right now. You still own your Seattle house or did you sell when you moved? And someone else asked, did you rent out your old place? Yeah, so I am currently renting this place, but I own my other place and I rent it out. So that was my plan all along with buying that place is that I wanna hold on to it as long as possible and rent it out. Love you, love you too. Do you have suggestions on where slash how to donate unused makeup? Unused makeup, if it's not used, you can actually donate it to anywhere in your city, like local women's shelters would be a good spot. If it's not used, most all of them will take it because they can give it to the people that are there. If it is used, Project Beauty Share is a great spot. You can mail in your donations. I just put them in a flat rate box and then ship it to Project Beauty Share. They're based here in Washington. Absolute must for your new New York home. <laughs> As you can tell, people on Instagram kind of knew about New York. So the place in November, I'm not being too picky about, but for the place that I'm moving, moving to, 
I'm not trying to move again in a year because it's expensive and then doing it in a city is just like a whole other level like a city like New York because it's just so much harder to get around and everything. I'm not gonna put like a year amount on how long I plan on staying in New York, but I definitely am hoping that I'll wanna stay more than a year so I'm not moving again in a year. I mean, if I'm moving like my whole business and everything over there, it's like 99% that I'm gonna stay there for more than a year, you know? So, so I know the New York market is insane, like the rental market. You basically have to go there look at a place and sign the lease on the same day. So there's not really a point in like looking at apartments until you're ready to sign. I've been looking on Street Easy and all like the New York apartment apps. So I know like what you can and can't get. And I know the things that are harder to get in New York. So this is like my ideal place, okay? Ideal would be washer and dryer in unit. I know, <laughs> hard to come by. Natural light for filming. I rambled on here for a long time. So long story short, I also might just have to get an office space since, you know, apartments are so expensive and small in New York. So I might have to have two separate spaces, one for living and then one for work, which is a business expense. It's getting very scented in here with the two candles going. <laughs> what direction is your channel going? That's a good question. I think about this daily, literally. I don't know. I'm really curious to hear your guys' thoughts on this because I personally feel like people right now are less interested in makeup content, especially like single reviews. I think people are just more interested in getting to know people and lifestyle content and just talking and videos like this. I know that's what I'm interested in. I love watching other people's vlogs, but also I've always been more drawn to vlogs, but I don't know. What do you guys want to see? Obviously there's going to be tons of different kinds of content on my channel in the next few months just fun stuff like apartment hunting apartment tours living in new cities i want to do vlogs just exploring the different cities i am still going to be doing makeup content so don't worry my channel is not like taking like a full 360 here or anything i am still going to be doing makeup content in the period of time from november until i do like the final move Obviously it's going to be a little bit different because I'm going to have to pack as much of the makeup I want to use in videos if that makes sense. So I am going to just like sit down and pre-plan out some makeup content so I can specifically bring certain products for those videos. But I'm not going to like abandon the makeup content or anything, but I do really like making vlogs. I know you guys like watching them. Some of my vlogs are more viewed than makeup videos. I know that I like subscribing to people for them and not specifically for like one thing, unless it's like, you know, a finance channel or something like that. Even then, I really like to get to know the people behind whatever topic they're talking about. So I don't know, man, let me know what you guys want to see or just where you want my channel to be headed. Let me know. How do you feel about your upload schedule now and workload? I am so happy that my therapist is actually the one who recommended not having a set schedule and not friggin' murdering myself over getting three videos a week out. And it took me a long time to like really be okay with that and wrap my head around the fact that like my worth as a human is not just my work. And because it's so public YouTube, it's hard to kind of separate those things because a lot of the stuff I do on a day to day, you guys don't see. So to me at the beginning, it felt like, well, if I'm not putting up three videos a week, then like people are going to think I'm lazy or not working or whatever. And at the end of the day, a, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> like I do care what you guys think, but the best thing for myself and my body physically is just finding a balance where I'm not killing myself. I'm not overly stressed and I can kind of like just maintain everything better and go see a friend if I want to. Like I literally used to not do that because I would just be working all the time. It was super not healthy. And now like looking back, I, see that and i wish i would have changed things sooner since i made that announcement i have uploaded two videos every single week but just the switch of not having a specific day and time where it has to go up by has been such a stress relief for me at the end of the day 99 percent of you have said that you like the surprise uploads that you don't care about a set schedule so now without that pressure and set time i'm able to upload the next day if I need to, you know? It's just so much, so much nicer. I'm definitely still not at a perfect balance, but basically right now I'm at a point where I have pretty much two to three weeks always ahead of schedule, always pre-filmed. And if I can stay in that state, when I have something like a three-day migraine come, it's not detrimental to where, you know, I can't have a video go up because I already have stuff pre-filmed. So as long as I can stay that far ahead with two videos a week, 
things are good and the stress is like a little bit lowered. It's not that I, you know, still won't work, like right now it's Sunday when I'm filming this and I'm working all day today. It's not that I am not doing things like that anymore because I still am because I still need to film on the days that I'm able to, but two videos a week versus three videos a week is like five million times more doable. So thank you guys for being flexible with that and thank you to my therapist for suggesting that. <laughs> How do you stay on top of time management? So I pre-plan everything. As you can see, I have 5 million things that I'm thinking of like ahead of time just for the move and everything that needs to be done and when it needs to be done by. And so I think a good way to do that is to write down all of those things and then work backwards and actually start penciling it in to your calendar. Google Calendar I actually really like now because it's really easy to move things around. But if you do that and work backwards, then you can be like, okay, in a month I have this thing. If I have all this other stuff going on in the next few weeks, I know I'm gonna need to start said task by this date. And then you just actually put it into your calendar. You can put tasks in Google Calendar and I also use Google Keep. I also do time block and use different colors for different things so that you can look at your week and see like when it's easier to mesh certain things with other things. Are we getting Christmas in New York vlogs this year? You will be getting New Year's in Boston vlogs this year. I think that's probably everything I can fit into this video. This is probably a half hour long, no idea. If you have stuck around until this point, comment the word pumpkin down below, let me know. Thank you if you have stuck around this long. I really appreciate all of you guys who watch my videos and who care about things like this and care about things going on in my life. It's a weird thing, YouTube, but whenever I meet you guys in real life, it's so cool. And I just really appreciate those of you who take time out of your day to actually sit down and watch videos like this. So if you're excited for all of the moving content, everything to come, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. If you wanna check out BetterHelp and get 10% off your first month, I'm gonna have the link down below, but it's betterhelp.com slash win. I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye.